Hello coders and thanks for joining the Renaissance Coders team with another Unity 3D tutorial. My name is Darren and today we're going to be talking about rigid bodies and colliders so we can get physics based movements in our Unity 3D game. Okay, so let's run the game to see what we have right now. We have these two cubes that we're going to be focusing on for the video. If I run, you can see that nothing happens even though they're suspended in the air. Now what we want is for, for gravity to act on these objects and pull them down to the floor. All right. So how do we do that? Well, it's pretty simple. Let's click on the object that we want to manipulate, and then we're going to come over here into the inspector panel. We're going to click Add Component, go to Physics, and click Rigid Body. I'm going to go ahead and do this for the other cube as well. Go to Rigid Body. All right, and that's all we have to do. So I'm going to go ahead and run the project to see what that did. As you can see, now the, the cubes will be responsive to gravity and they'll fall. Now, if you just follow those instructions and you notice that your cubes are moving really slowly, uh, that's due to the fact that gravity isn't affecting your object as greatly as you want. So to alleviate that, you can come up to the Edit button, go to Project Settings, and then go to Physics. And what you'll see is that up in the Inspector pane, you'll see that gravity has a setting, uh, and it's standard at 0, negative 9.81, and 0. So what I did is I lowered mine quite a bit uh, to negative 100. You can put it at whatever value value you're comfortable with. Um, so again, I put mine at negative 100 and they fall at a decent speed. I don't know if it's completely realistic, but I'm happy with it. Um, so fix that setting if your cubes are moving really slowly. The next thing that we're going to do is, I know you guys noticed that they just fall straight through the floor. So to fix that, all we need to do is click on the object that we want to have collided with the floor, go to Add Component, Physics, and here you see a variety of different colliders. Now, the collider differences are the shape, so you have a box and a sphere and a capsule. Um, also a mesh and a wheel and a strain. But basically, these different colliders are just going to be a uh, better fit for different game objects. Also note that you can have multiple colliders on a single game object. So think about a character. You might have a capsule collider for the body, and you might have a sphere collider for the head. Okay? Since we're dealing with cubes, it's natural that we're going to choose our box collider. Okay, So we choose our box collider. And something that uh, I'd like to point out is that you can modify the bounds of your box collider. You just simply click in the inspector view, the edit collider on your component, and then you'll see these vertices pop up on your object, on your collider. And you can click and drag the vertices and simply change the bounds of your collider. So if you guys want to see this in action, what I'll do is I'll lower the bounds of the bottom of the collider. I'll increase the bounds of the bottom of the collider and I'll run and you guys can see that it'll stop hovering above the floor. Okay. Now if I bring those bounds back to normal, you'll see that it'll it'll, it'll look more like the mesh is colliding with the floor, which is, you know, it's a natural look. That's what we want. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and add the collider to my other object. Okay, so now we have a physics, uh, a, a basic physics system with our rigid body and collider combination. And they'll both fall on the floor. Now I have a script set up to have these objects move towards each other when I press a button. And as you can see, they roll towards each other. However, I'm not telling them to roll. In fact, I'm only telling them to move in a particular direction. So the reason they're rolling is because the friction is catching on the corners and it's causing them to move like that which is a realistic motion. That's typically uh, what you would expect if you were moving a cube across a non-slippery uh, non slippery floor. Okay. Okay, so we have our rigid body and our box collider pretty well explained at, at a high level. Uh, let's, let's jump down to our box collider here to explain some of the settings. So we have an is trigger uh, box here that we can check. And what this is going to do is it's going to prevent any sort of collisions happening with the collider. So if I run this, you can see it'll just fall through the floor. You might ask, what's the point of adding a box collider component if we're just going to set it to where the collisions won't happen on it? Well, trigger colliders are really great if you want to have something happen when a player enters a zone. So the zone will be encapsulated by this box collider. And whenever you run into that collider, you don't necessarily want to collide with it because you might be colliding with open space. 
and instead you might want to run an action through a script or something like that. Okay, so that's what is trigger is typically for. Then we have this physics material. Okay, before I talk about that, let me just cover the bases on the center and the size. So what we can do is change the position of the collider relative to the game object. So this is changing it relative to the Y, relative to the X, and then relative to the Z. So I'm going to set these back to 0, 0, 0. These are pretty straightforward, and this, the size is what you saw me manipulating earlier. This is just another way to do it. So you could do it like this, or you could do it by editing the collider by pressing that button. Okay, so I'm going to set back the defaults. Now let's come back to this physics material. Physics materials are going to determine how your, um, how your objects react to substances around it. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to come down to the project panel, right click, and go to create a new physics material. And I'm going to call this slippery material. Now what I'm trying to do with the slippery material is prevent that rolling motion. And if you look up here in the physics material inspector, we can affect things like dynamic friction and static friction. So I'm going to bring the friction values down to zero. Okay, and I'm also going to set the friction combined to minimum. Now I'm just going to show you these few settings. You guys can play with these on your own just so you can, I'm, I'm simply proving that it works. Okay, so I have the slippery physics material. So now what I need to do is drag and drop that slippery material into the material slot for the box collider. And I'm going to have to do that for each object. Okay, so I have two objects sharing the same physics material. Now when I run this, check out what happens. It's pretty cool. So as you can see, one, they're not rolling, and then when they collide with each other, they're going to keep spinning because friction isn't asking them to stop, or they're not causing, friction isn't causing them to stop. Okay, so this is a pretty cool effect. You can also affect things like bounciness. So you can have a bouncy physics material. You can also actually create your own custom physics materials, but that is a tutorial for a later date. Okay. So let's go up to our rigid body and talk about some of these settings really quick. First we have mass, and mass isn't going to do what you might expect it to do. So what I did just now is I set the yellow cube's mass to 1,000 when its default is 1. So what you might expect to happen is it's going to fall a lot faster because you might expect it to be heavier. When in reality, the mass of the object has no, um, has no effect on how physics acts on that object. What mass affects, what, what mass uh, has an effect on is how that object is going to interact with other objects. Okay, So here we have a green cube, which his mass is at 1, and then we have our yellow cube, his mass is at 1,000. So if I run this, watch what happens. I'm going to bring them into each other. And as you can see, that left cube just totally dominated that right cube. Okay, And the reason is because you have a much heavier object or a much higher mass object pushing up against a much lower mass object. And that's the reason it's doing that. So that's going to be our mass. Then we have drag. Drag is what you might think of as air resistance. Okay, so I'm going to bring the drag of the yellow cube up to about 50, and then I'm going to run it. And you can see that it's not falling because right now it has too much drag. So I'm going to slowly lower the drag, and around 45 it starts to drop. Okay, and I can bring it back up so it has more air resistance. I'll bring it back down. Okay, so that's going to be what the drag variable does. Let's skip down to. Uh, use gravity, I think you guys can guess what that does, is kinematic. Is kinematic is get basically, it's similar to is trigger. So if you think about is trigger, it kind of turns off the collider. If you think about is kinematic, it kind of turns off the rigid body. Okay. So if I have is kinematic to be on, if it's true, then it's not going to fall due to gravity. And as you can see, my drag is zero, but it's still not going to fall. If I uh, uncheck is kinematic, you'll see it falls. And then what I can do is, if I have is kinematic, I'm moving the objects based off of their rigid bodies. So if is kinematic is true, that left cube isn't going to move. Okay. If it is true, then it will move. Or if it's not true, then it will move. Okay. So that's what is kinematic does. It basically determines whether your rigid body is on or off. Um, in a very broad sense, it doesn't actually turn off your rigid body. 
jump down to collision detection. In most cases, we're going to be using a discrete collision detection. So if you think about how collision might work, it works in, it, if it's discrete, it works in discrete steps. So as your object moves along, it's here, then it's here, then it's here, then it's here. Okay. And what could happen is if your object is moving fast enough, okay, so imagine, imagine the green cube here is a projectile and the yellow cube here is a human, okay, or a wall or something like that. And we want the bullet to hit the wall. If its collision is set to discrete, at one frame it might be here, at another frame it might be here, okay. So it's going to pass directly through that wall and, and the game is going to register that it got hit. Continuous, uh, continuous de collision detection works in a little bit of a different way. And the best way for me to describe it in short is that it's going to, it's, it's going to draw a collider around this frame step and this frame step. And if that collider, so the collider, if, if the first frame comes from here and the second frame goes to here, that collider is going to be drawn from that distance. So with continuous collision detection, um, the the wall will be hit by the bullet and discrete collision detection it'll actually skip over the wall okay and collision dynamic or continuous dynamic is uh, similar to that it's just more dynamic okay now now we have uh, these constraints here so we can freeze the position on the X Y and Z coordinates we can also freeze the rotation um, so if I if I were to say the rotation on the Y is frozen for let's see this is the green cube okay so I'm not gonna I shouldn't be able to rotate on the y-axis uh, for my green cube so let's see if that holds true okay so let's see if the green this it's gonna be this right cube let's see if that rotates on the y-axis and it doesn't but you can see that this other cube does okay alright guys so that was a pretty high overview of the rigid body and the box collider uh, other colliders are very similar to the box collider, so you kind of know uh, about those as well. Go ahead and keep playing with these things. Uh, I'm going to be putting out a lot more Unity videos, Unity scripting videos in the future. If you liked this video, go ahead and subscribe for more. As always, this has been a Renaissance Coders tutorial. Thanks for watching.